Our next panel right before lunch uh, is going to talk about the significance of the Asian market. And that panel is going to be moderated by Professor Marhavi Charabat. Parky, did I say that right? Close. <laughs> That's Madhvi Chakrabarti. And aren't you glad that one of our panelists is from the same part of the world? So I don't have to butcher two names at all. So. Good morning, everyone. It's really a pleasure to come and like share our learnings in front of you. And before we start, I really want to First of all, uh, thank Rutgers Business School, the Dean, the Chair of the Marketing Committee, uh, Professor Chakravarti, who has been kind enough to you know get us on board to share some of our thoughts. And last but not the least, uh, Professor Yaila, uh, because she's the one uh, with whom we spoke in the beginning and um, she said about the summit. And it was really great to, you know, now come and be part of that. So as they say, pictures speak a thousand times more than words. So we'll start with a short video about our community. And before then, we get into a discussion. So over to you, uh, Professor Chakravarti. Asian Americans. In less than three years, Asian Americans will represent 1.3 trillion in buying power in the U.S. How are they changing the landscape of America? There are over 21 million Asian Americans living in the United States. Since 2006, the Asian American population has grown 43%, faster than any other ethnic group. Asian American buying power increased 257%. It is expected to reach 1.3 trillion in 2022. They're the most educated, with more than half having at least a bachelor's degree. They also have the highest medium household income of any ethnic group. Asian Americans are big drivers of food culture in the U.S. and major consumers and spenders in the eating out category. They are the leaders when it comes to technology consumption, purchase, and usage. Here are other categories where online spending has grown significantly. Millennial Asian Americans made most purchases in the categories of clothing and accessories. Asian Americans are also having a huge impact on society and culture, increasingly influencing what America reads, eats, watches, and listens to. So, what's your share of the 1.3 trillion market? Find out more today with 3AF. Thank you. So, before I go ahead and introduce my speakers, let me just uh, have a disclaimer here. I don't speak Indian, none of us speak Asian. <laughs> and um, my daughter does get called out in school and she does get asked the question, are you Spanish? So <laughs> that ties in the entire picture of who the Asian community is. So on the far right of me, we have Indrajit Majumdar, who goes by the name Indy and is the executive vice president and head of brand partnership with CTV Network and Z5 OTT North and Latin America, the leading South Asian TV network globally. He also serves as the board president of the Asian American Advertising Federation or the 3AF, the primary go-to resource when it comes to Asian advertising, Asian marketing, and the power of Asian American consumer. Indrajit is a strong advocate of the multiculturalism in North American media and marketing space with cutting edge work achievements across television, print, and event management spanning India, USA, Canada, Trinidad, and Latin America. He takes pride in representing the community and Asian media and marketers at important industry forums in an endeavor to bring spotlight to the community. He also serves on the communications committee and the data measurements and insights committee of Association of National Advertisers, Alliance for Inclusive and Multicultural Marketing. He served as a judge for the 2021 ANA Multicultural Excellence Awards and 2020 Canadian Marketing Awards. Next to him, we have Telly Wong. 
Telly is the Senior Vice President and Chief Content Officer of IW Group, a leading multicultural creative agency that designs innovative campaigns and experiences for clients such as McDonald's, Brown Foreman, and Warner Brother Pictures. Fresh, transformative, and culturally progressive, Telly's work has been recognized with numerous honors from such leading industry organizations as Adage, Public Relations Society of America, and PR News. In 2020, he and IW Group won the grand prize in the Asian category at the prestigious ANA Multicultural Excellence Awards for the Wash the Hate campaign, the first national campaign to raise awareness among the surge in anti-Asian hate crimes following the outbreak of COVID-19. He is a graduate of NYU, where he earned his BFA in Dramatic Writing with a double major in East Asia. Asian studies. Um, if we can move on to the next slide, please. So I was actually looking for a good in infograph that spoke about what the Asian market depicts, and unfortunately couldn't find a good representation. So here's a hodgepodge of the hodgepodge community that we represent. But let's go to the experts and ask what they think about who is this Asian market segments? Who represents this community? We'll start off with Telly and then go to Indrajit. Who represents it? Um, well, there's over 20 million and uh, 20, uh, 20 sub-segments, distinct sub-segments across the country. And uh, right now, uh, we're in an interesting time because of uh, the diversity within the community and the impact that it's making beyond the community. And you're seeing that, um, you know, BTS, I'm sure there's some army in the room. And also, uh, you know, things like Squid Game, you know, who would know who would ever expect that, the, you know, the biggest television show this year would be a Korean language program from overseas. So you're seeing that impact and happening and you're seeing the growth happening and those things are kind of running concurrently. And it's, it's just a very exciting time for just the multicultural marketing in general. Indrajit? Yes. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you for the gracious introduction. And uh, before I start speaking on this subject, uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed Professor Francisco's presentation, the last one on the Hispanic segment. And I was amused to see, and rather uh, we are aware that we are pretty similar in terms of Hispanic and Asian, just for few key differences. So the basic difference is like two thirds of the Hispanic community here are US born. And in our case, uh, two thirds of our Asian communities foreign born, like in different countries. And talking about the Asian consumer, like we come from 20 different countries. We are very diverse. We are not monolithic. We are very diverse. So like communities from China, from Philippines, from India, from Korea, from Japan, to all different countries. So though we are very different and we speak different languages, we are clubbed under Asian and we are proud for that. But why we are clubbed under one, there are a few key uh, elements or key characteristics that are very common among us. So I would say collectivism, as in we are very interdependent on each other. We like, uh, like in, in a household, in a family, we want the others to succeed. We want everyone, everything to be together. Pragmatism, because you see that when you grow up in uh, uh, circumstances where you have to compete a lot, there are a lot of challenges and stuff. So it basically shapes your outlook in a manner where you want to like, you know, do whatever, like I should get this, like if I have if I want to do something, I better do something. So that's the kind of attitude that you come out with. And the third thing is, and very important thing is familial values. We are very family oriented people. And that's where I see there's a very, very important aspect, especially in a marketing forum that brands can take note of because we like to stay in long, big extended families with parents, kids are there, grandparents are there. So the way brands should look at us, is they should consider those factors like while they speak to us. So in nutshell, 
uh, answering uh, Madhvi's question. So this is how I would define our Asian American uh, community. And so collectivism, pragmatism, and feminism. Correct. Perfect, thank you. So then looking at the future, the current trends, or maybe even the fusion of how we see the societies forming in the American subcontinent, whether it's food, clothing, celebration, media, etc. You know, we are no longer defined by Mississippi Masala or fresh off the boat. So then who are we going in the, uh, future tense, looking at the trends, what should the Gen Z population look for in the Asian market space? Well, we're figuring that out right now, and that's exciting. Uh, we don't know what's in store, because uh, when I started doing multicultural marketing, my background was in general market uh, 10 years ago. I would never have expected this shift from you know much more traditional sort of representations in advertising and media to now much more youth-centric, uh, you know, music and pop culture and things like that. So uh, I, I don't know what to expect, but I think this is going to continue and as the community and the population reaches a more critical mass, that means there's the audiences for certain things, there's consumers for certain products, and there's also a, a louder voice in the room when it comes to telling stories. So uh, I think, you know, we're, we're kind of figuring it out, and um, I'm really excited to see what happens with everything going on right now. I just want to add to what Telly said. Like he rightly said that we're trying to figure it out right now. But because six percent of uh, the Gen Z population is Gen Z population is Asian Americans, which is like I would say out of twenty four million, like four million or so. So right now, because of the heightened uh, awareness about DEI in the community, you all know what uh, our Asian community went through last year. So because of that, a lot of focus of companies has been towards the Asian segment. And as we saw in the uh, slide before when we were showing the pre-pandemic that uh, uh, there are certain categories like luxury, fashion, lifestyle, food, where Asians are great proponents of that. And there's a reason for that because of their educations, uh, education and aspiration level. Like, uh, I don't want to quote any wrong numbers, but uh, I just want to share this piece. Uh, which is which is interesting that more than 55.4 percent of Asians have graduated college and 27 percent postgraduate which is 91 percent and 103 percent more than the general population which also means that their needs aspirations their outlook towards life is pretty modern but as uh, uh, we would tell said that, you know, a uh, lot of data still has to come on that. I'm sure companies like Nielsen and others are working on that. But I would definitely feel that uh, uh, for a lot of categories, it's, 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 it's a very promising potential uh, audience for them. Over to you. Awesome. So, um, Telly, you sent us an interesting video that you created for, for MACD. Would you like to speak about that before we bring it up? Yeah, the video you're about to see is just a recap of some of the work uh, that uh, my agency has been doing with McDonald's uh, over the past year. And um, McDonald's is one of the first uh, major brands that really invested significantly into the Asian American uh, consumer market. Uh, they've been doing, they've been working in the community, marketing to Asian consumers, Asian American consumers for the past uh, 14 years. And we've, uh, our agency has been partners with them in, in terms of evolving it and sort of meeting the needs uh, that the community has right now. So you'll see, uh, you'll get a taste of uh, what's been done. Here it is. Our McDonald's order. It's short, so don't blink. 
check it out. Hi, see si Sawirito, and this is my McDonald's order. Thank you. That was very powerful. So a great segue into the next topic. And uh, any conversation today remains incomplete without mentioning the pandemic, COVID-19. What has been the impact for the Asian community? Indrajit. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's a topic, you know, on which probably I can go on, but I would like to share some key things. Uh, one, first, the negative side of it, how our community got affected. And then, of course, the positive side of the pandemic. You no, know, there's like, of course, every adversity gives rise to opportunity. So what, what we probably did. So talking about the negative side, we all know, like the last year from 2019 to 2020, the crimes against our seniors, our community went up by 150%. And in a lot of places, our businesses in, got devastated. Our people, uh, racial attacks against our Asian community. And all of that brought us into a situation wherein things were getting pretty tough for our community day by day. So at this point in time, I would like to talk something about how our community stepped up. I'm also part of the Asian American Advertising Federation. So to talk a little bit about that, so what we actually do. So we basically work with a lot of companies who are marketeers, advertising agencies, Asian media companies, a lot of students who come in together and we try to bring spotlight to our community. And when something happens, because see everywhere, there's a social aspect to that, there's a commercial aspect to that. So when this happened, uh, the hate crimes were happening against our community. At that point in time, uh, 3AF, joined hands with Facebook, and we basically did a town hall a few months ago on systemic racism, wherein we got very eminent people like uh, Richard Louis. Uh, he's a very senior correspondent. He came and spoke about that. Telly was also one of the speakers uh, in, in that forum. So we, we spoke about that issue, and we brought in attention that, you know, this should not happen or whatever. And how our company stepped up, like we just saw a video about Wash the Hate. So we have different agency members in 3F. So IW Group is a member. Then there is a company called Admiratia who are also an agency. Though they came out with a, uh, they come, came out with a messaging called racism is, racism is contagious. So that was also a very deep, uh, like a, a portrayal of what was going on and what should not happen. And then we have another company called Intertrend that it, uh, campaign called Make Noise Today. So these were few things we were driving from our end. And we work very closely with a lot of our mainstream partners like Ad Age, Ad Week. And because of this issue, what happened was it caught their attention and they wanted us to speak more about uh, this and how this can be alleviated. So this is the negative side of the pandemic that came up and all that. On the positive side, I would say that when this vaccination effort came, this is a great effort by the government getting so many people vaccinated. That's, that's top priority for the country. In that case, our uh, Asian media partners from the Chinese community, Filipino community, South Asian community, we came in together. We created commercials for our community members, because as I mentioned to you in my earlier uh, uh, segment, that two thirds of our population are foreign born, which means that if you communicate to them in plain English, it's not going to resonate with them. 
they don't understand they don't speak that language a lot of them so it was very important and uh, necessary for us to communicate to them in the language that they can relate to as a result we are told that the collaboration that we had with hhs and ad council definitely you know give a positive boost to the vaccination efforts at this point in time professor can i request uh, the videos to be played uh, one is the video that uh, uh, like where we are saying that you know the hatred uh, like great video from hbo max and then there is some vaccination creative that i wanted to show what we did for the community actually yeah the next slide up there has the three videos one in vietnamese one in chinese and one in hindi i believe um i i couldn't pick and choose my favorite so if you don't mind you know sitting through three commercials of 30 seconds each let's play all three of them Tôi chích ngừa vaccine Covid-19 vì tôi muốn gặp lại gia đình mình. Tôi muốn đảm bảo con gái tôi được an toàn và bé có thể tới trường lại. Mình muốn đi du lịch lại. Vaccine Covid-19 an toàn và giúp bảo vệ chống lại căn bệnh chết người này. Hãy chung tay tiếp tục chiến đấu chống lại virus để chúng ta có thể quay lại an toàn với những khoảnh khắc mình bỏ lỡ.我接种新冠疫苗是为了保护自己和家人。打了第二针后，虽然有常见的症状，像是发烧、全身无力，但过了三十六小时，一切都恢复正常。现在我可以安全的和妈妈及家人见面，参加女儿的毕业典礼，
graduating this month, uh, October end. So we'll share, we'll talk about their experiences and know what they basically gained out of that in the due course of time. In addition, because I know a lot of the students are watching us, I would just say, like, you know, uh, be very watchful, observant, and always you, among your student community, keep interacting with people. Don't assume. Do things in a manner wherein everyone, like I know that I would like to bring in the point of model minority myth at this point in time, very briefly. So the funny thing is a lot of times what happens is when I go on business trips and I'm coming back, and when I take the Uber or Lyft, I'm in the car, we generally have a conversation with the driver. So he would say, so you are a techie? Oh, are you coming from Silicon Valley? Are you techie? So I said, no, I'm, I'm not. Oh, you must be a medical professional then. So I said, sorry, my parents wanted me to be one, but I could not, uh, I did not become. Oh, then you would be in the Wall Street, like doing financial in the Wall Street. I said, no. Then what do you do then? So I said, I work for a television broadcasting company. I'm into marketing. So then they have the look on their face that what is this guy doing in marketing? Because that isn't it supposed to be a cool job? like you know like you are like hobnobbing and stuff so a lot of times i would say things and times are changing so with generation a lot of things would change so i would just say to our younger students uh, that you know uh, like when you meet uh, don't assume try to get to know the other thing uh, the person and stuff so that's what i would like to add in terms of what uh, Ms. Telly said i can totally uh, i can totally relate to that when I worked for a Fortune 15 company, one of the executives actually walked up to me and said, why are you not with IT? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, uh, let me come up with you know another question then. Um, when we heard about, you know, I'm just following the Hispanic uh, presentation that we had, and we heard about a lot of families that actually have a native language that they speak at home. And here I am, I grew up in India, but my first language was English. I grew up knowing English better than my native language. And then I learned my native language as my second language. So, um, and I feel that is a challenge that we see in several communities within the Asian market. Do you think uh, that, you know, when we look at marketing as well, that there is a perceived, uh, partialness to some of the other markets as compared to the Asian market because of not having this language barrier or do you think there is a, you know, what I like to call a visibility or an identity crisis? Yeah, the uh, Asian American segment, it's a nightmare to a lot of people because uh, of the multiple languages and generations and things like that. And that's why a lot of marketers, well, one of the reasons why they say that they're not in that space, because um, once you start hearing about it, you're like, okay, I'll do an Asian campaign. But then the agencies will be like, well, you got to do it in Chinese, Korean, and da, da, da. and they're like, whoa, 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 we don't have that much money. Um, so I, I think that that makes people worried. But when you look at just, we're marketers here, right? So when you're drilling down on the numbers. I think there's like, you know, three or four sort of um, in, in terms of population size, uh, key ethnic segments that you might want to target as part of your campaign. So, you know, Chinese, uh, Indian, Korean, uh, sometimes Vietnamese, uh, and then other groups, you could probably use English language communication. So like Filipino, in some cases, South Asian. Um, so I think it's about our job up here is about demystifying that segment and, and making it more accessible to uh, somebody that, that's interested. You don't have to pitch them the whole, the whole shebang all at once. I mean, maybe have them try out the segment, focus on one ethnic group, and then see where that goes and, and build from there. Uh, but also, if you're targeting a younger consumer, I think uh, English uh, makes sense. If you're targeting like a Gen Z, Asian American, uh, or a millennial. Uh, so it's about talking to the experts and figuring out what makes sense for the client's business and their products and uh, the best strategy. So in addition to what Kelly said, I would just say that, you know, in today's world, at the end of the day, in everything that we do, numbers, data, insights, ROI, these are the key things that keep coming all the time. So from the ROI perspective, to if you look, and if you saw the first video that we showed, that in 2022, the Asian American 
segment will touch 1.3 trillion buying power. Now that's astounding. I do not actually blame marketeers for not looking into our community till now. The reason is, of course, lack of awareness. Second thing is, yes, compared to the Afro-American Afro -American community, Hispanic community, we are less in number. But the business point is, even if we are less at number, if you see the stats that you know, that the level of graduate, postgraduate degree, uh, we over index in home ownership, car ownership, and uh, like, you know, all luxury items. So as a marketeer, what are you looking for? You are looking for opportunities wherein your product meets the right fitment. So even if there are like a lot of mass, but again, if you are getting a focused group who can be your great potential fit. So that's what I would lay more emphasis on. Second is from a data perspective again. So they say in the next 30 years, Asian American would be the biggest multicultural segment, even maybe surpassing the Spanish community or becoming equal to that. So which means that right now, the way uh, probably marketers can prepare themselves uh, if they look into those things, of course, there is a bit of investment. You need to delve more, deep dive. You cannot just one shoe size fits all. You cannot do that. But it's worth the effort because at the end of the day, as I said, ROI, everyone is seeking that. The company is seeking that. Uh, uh, the customer is seeking that. Uh, the agency is seeking that. Everyone is seeking that. So that's what my answer to this question would be. Perfect. Thank you. Um, closing comments and maybe also an uh, you know, let's use this platform as an awareness platform. So you know we are living in the age of a cancel culture. In many many non minority marketers might actually hesitate to touch upon this market for the fear of doing something wrong and getting backlisted. In turn, what are your what is your advice to them? I don't think you have a choice. Uh, if you're doing marketing now, you have to be involved in the multicultural segments because they're informing your total marketing campaign. It's not about doing marketing in silos and boxes and we'll do a total market campaign here and we'll do a black campaign, Asian, whatever. It's it's really about putting all these elements together, these ingredients together and making that, and making creating campaigns that resonate with m multiple and mass audiences. So it, it's, uh, you know, if you're going to just wait it out, then you probably should start looking for a new job. I would say that, you know, though one might accept or not accept, the world is changing rapidly. The world is changing and multicultural is the new norm. It's a necessity as we are seeing, like, you know, Shang-Chi, uh, it's like, it's, it's a new, uh, craze right now the Marvel uh, movie. Also on Netflix, Squid Game, like Squid Game is beating all shows hands down. A movie like Parasite won so many Oscars. So everything around us is changing. Like uh, brands are becoming more multicultural and you have to accept that. Like we had a very interesting conversation earlier this week. Uh, we were speaking at the advertising week that just got concluded yesterday. So this time they had a very specific segment on the Asian American community. And Matt, who's a CEO of Advertising Week, he said that, hey, you know what? Your community brings in a lot of value, though you guys are not seen so much, you guys are not so vocal. You generally are very, uh, meaning humble and you guys like uh, lie low and stuff. But I think we should celebrate being Asians and we should do something about that. So that was something which is very heartening and that is increasingly happening, be it for the Hispanic segment or our segment and which is very encouraging. And I think, we are at a point in time when we cannot ignore this and whoever ignores that probably you know you're calling for the company's doom or the products too so i would say times are good uh, times are bright uh, for the multicultural and the asian american segment thank you thank you so much telly and thank you so much indrajit before we conclude if you don't mind running the last um, finale <laughs>
know to put family first. Come on! <laughs> we have to stop letting their fear shape us. You are more than you realize. I have no limitations. Do not forget how this feels right now.